What's cracking with you people? Anansi here and welcome to a new project on the channel. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. One of my favorite games ever made and a game that's widely considered by many to be not just one of the best Star Wars games ever made, but one of the best video games ever made. Now to some people, I, I, can, I, I have heard, and this is a fairly recent thing, that apparently it's overrated or overblown. To some people, it's not as well earned as the reputation. For me personally, I don't frankly care. This is one of my favorite games ever of all time. And I'm very excited to share it with you here today. Now, before we jump into it, we have a couple of things to get out the way. Um, your options, which is, you know, just gameplay-wise, auto level up, you know, that's what it says, camera auto center, auto save, and other stuff that we'll get into further on. Um, some of this stuff is basically just how you read the game, what shows up. Your status summary, I turn off because you're going to get this, because you don't really need to know the finer details if you don't want to. Like, it'll tell you, like, how much money you earned or how much XP you got at the end of every battle where you can just hit pause and then go in and look at it. This one has your floating numbers, which gives you some stuff like, which, you know, it's just your basic, um, RPG thing where like every time you hit it show you if you missed, did some damage, crit damage, how much damage you took, that kind of thing. Many map vibration subtitles, tutorial pop-ups, and hide on equipable. We'll get more to that later. Auto pause, this is just basically how frequently the game pauses whenever you perform an action in battle. I only have a set to where only two times it pops up, so we don't have to worry about it happening too often. And then you wrap it in sound, base necessity. I recommend before anything else, when you first get this game always turn the brightness up because when you first start the game it's very very dark that is a default there to show you what it looks like so i always so i turn this up to right here um that's about appropriate for me and then we have you know voiceover sound movie that kind of stuff and downloadable content is on the original i'm playing on the original xbox so the original xbox live has been shut down this content is lost forever unless you already have it which I do on my original Xbox not this one but my old one and on Steam so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and make a new game and I'm gonna be quiet because this music is amazing this is one of my favorite character creation um, themes of all time. Now, here's how this works. Uh, oh, and, and just just one final note. This is this this is a song that only showed up. I, I want to say in two games, in two games since. One was in the Old Republic MMO, which is a which is a MMO that I still play, and I want to say once in the sequel. But even then, it showed up. Very, it's, even then, it was only very rare. This shows this. This is pretty much the theme of Knights of the Old Republic. When I think Knights of the Republic, this is the theme that comes to mind. Now, you have three classes to choose from, and two gender, and two gender to choose from. This was back when you really couldn't just have like, or at least, or at the very least, when 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 um when Bioware and I this is a Bioware game. This is actually the game that put Bioware on the map, as far as anyone is concerned. If, if you think Bioware, you think one of two games. Knights of the Republic or Mass Effect. Um, but this is going to put Bioware on the map. And this was kind of before they really narrowed down the character creation. So you have your class and your gender. So I'm going to let you know right now. Each class has different attributes and different specialties. This is for those... The, the, sc the scoundrels for those of you who want to play a persuasive character. Those who sneak and kind of hide in the shadows and able to persuade and silver tongue the way through the game. Um, this one, this one is your technical class. This is for those who want to hack and repair certain things, try to get around even without maybe without their charisma, but more or less on their intellectual skill. And this is for those of you who just want to beat anything with a stick. <laughs> this is for raw, unadulterated power. Now, I usually play the scout. I used to play the scoundrel. I used to play the scoundrel, but there are certain things that I have learned that I prefer to do that the scout does more often and more frequently, well, more often, does more readily than any other one. So we're going with the scout. So we're going to do custom character. Quick character basically just lets you pick the name, 
and the face. And that's it. Custom character lets you go in and maintain the finer points. Now, we have to have a very, very, very wide selection of, uh, of characters here to pick from. Very diverse, very up and up. Now, I, now me personally, I usually pick between this character or this character. This character, because this character looks exactly like me, or at the very least, so close to my to what I look like that I'm like, I'm just going to pick this guy. Or this guy, because he looks the coolest. We're going to pick this guy. Attributes. Now, these attributes, these dictate your basic modifiers and your basic... This dictates what you excel at and what you are terrible at. Now, your strength is for your strength is for your melee combat. Basically, it determines how much damage you do and how often you hit your target. Your dexterity is for your blasters and your grenades. This determines how um this is this determines your def but this also determines your defense rating and how often you dodge attacks. Your constitution determines how much health you gain on each level up. Um, your intelligence dictates how many points you gain on each level up, as well as other things we'll get into. Your, your wisdom dictates how strong your force powers are, how hard they are to resist, and how hard you are to hit with a force power. And your charisma basically just dictates how, how easy it is for you to persuade people. Now we have 30 points. You see the top right, we have your point cost and your modifier. Your modifier is currently at minus one. That means that you lose... That means that it costs. Well, that means that you have a penalty right now. Um, if we, for instance, pour two into here, the modifier is now null. You don't, you don't get any. You don't excel in it, but you don't, but you're not terrible at it. Um, we'll, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this character the way I want to do it, and then we'll, and then we'll get right into it. And back. So here's how, here's how my point totals have uh, allocated throughout. So. How does this work? Well, basically speaking, I have I am very good. I'm going, I'm going to go for a predominantly uh, melee build um, with a high uh, high defense and ability to dodge attacks. Decent. Um, let's see if I can pull this back a little bit. And there we go. And we're going to go with average constitution. I'm not too worried about. Uh, health points gained by a via level up. Trust me, it's not be that important. Intelligence, we're gonna get um, more points to spend. But we, I think we get like two more points to spend on essential skills per level up. Uh, force powers and charisma just do a little bit more. So that's where we're at right now. Now skills. These are the skill points that when you level up, you get more points if your intelligence is high. Now. You have two kinds of you have two kinds of skills: class skills and cross class skills. Class skills are skills that essentially your character, uh, based on the class you pick, is already naturally good in. You don't need to put extra points into it. It's a one point skill cost. Cross class skills cost two. If you're now, for instance, the stealth, persuade, and security are scoundrel skills. They're the ones that. Um, cost cross class skills. It costs two points. It costs two more. If you're a, if you're a soldier, demolitions and I think treat injury are the only class skills you have. Now, how this works is you only get since it's a class since it, since we have a class skill, you can only invest four points into each skill going into it. So, for instance, I'm so, uh, I'm a cut back. When I get done allocating my points, and then I'll, I'll, I'll further explain. Okay, and back. So here's how this works. You only get four points to invest into every single skill when you're first starting out. I put four points into awareness, four points into persuasion, and four points into security. But you might be asking yourself, why does one say four and one say two? Because persuasion and security are cross-class skills. They cost two points for every one point. For every one point you gain, they cost two points to put into. So for instance. I take these two out, I have four. Put the, take, put the two in, I have zero. Trust me on this. This is, this is, this is fine to start off with because as you level up, every now and then you will get uh, the ability to level up your attributes to go with it. So let's, let's keep on pushing. Now our feats. These are basically these are basically skills that you get. Um, some you get 
starting off just because of your class. Others you get based on the um, points you put into certain abilities. So for instance, um, because we're a scout, we get automatically... What I think about it, it's, it's not that, it's just your class. So because we're a scout, we get access to light armor and medium armor. But specifically, the scout gets access to medium armor because you can't get medium without light. If you're a scoundrel, you only get light armor. If you're a if you're a soldier, you get heavy. Your access to flurry, which is your which is a rapid attack for your um for your sword, and then we have an implant level one, which basically lets you use base level implants. Rapid shot, your the the, uh, the uh, blaster equivalent of the flurry. Your proficiency in your in our blaster pistol, blaster rifle, and and melee weapons. So what we get here, we get to kind of pick what you get to kind of pick your abilities from here. Some of these do um, some of these do uh, enhancements to your base skill, but you, to your base attributes. Like this one gets plus to your persuasion and uh, and awareness and injury treatment. Uh, this one gets plus to security and and, uh, and computer use, or repair to in computer use, that kind of thing. So. You have ways to counter to counteract whatever skills you put into earlier. Um, so right now we're going to get we're going to go ahead and get this. Trust me, this will help later on. Now, on to the name. You have the ability to choose uh, international characters. So you want to kind of really fancy up your names. Uh, I think you have some Nordic, some Greek letters in here, that kind of thing. Um, then we also have, well, we also have a uh, French and stuff. I think Spanish ones to kind of, well, I say Spanish. I think Latin characters to kind of really put a flair on it. Um, you also hit Y for random. You got, so we got Aaron Kel, Aaron Kahl, Jake Tetra, Jerk Bell, Brogastana, Jago, Stari, so Trick Jerry. So you can pretty much pick your own. You can pretty much randomize if you want to pick one, but. I got a name that I'm going to go ahead and use for this one. We're going to use this one. This is going to be the name we go with for our RPG days. Upper and lowercase. And a Nazi wolf. That works for me. And let's get right into it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars! Wouldn't be a Star Wars game about that classic intro, huh? <laughs> Knights of the Old Republic. 4,000 years before the rise of the Galactic Empire. The Republic verges on collapse. Darth Malak, last surviving apprentice of the Dark Lord Revan, has unleashed an invincible Sith Armada upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Crushing all resistance, Malak's war of conquest has left the Jedi Order scattered and vulnerable, as countless knights fall in battle, and many more swear allegiance to the new Sith Master. In the skies above the outer rim world of Taurus, a Jedi battle fleet engages the forces of Darth Malak in a desperate effort to halt the Sith galactic domination. So that gives you all the backstory you need to know. We are 4,000 years before the events taking place at the end of Revenge of the Sith. That's how far removed from, from the movies this game is, and it is all the better for it. If you ask me my personal opinion.
We've been ambushed by a Sith battle fleet. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. And who are you? I'm Trask Olgo, ensign with the Republic fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the Endar Spire. We work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up, we have to find Bastila. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Who's Bastila? Bastil is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Well, not an officer, really, but she's the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. Now it's time to make good on that oath. I heard what everyone's saying about you. You've explored the farthest reaches of the galaxy. You've visited planets I've never even heard of. People with your skills and abilities are hard to find. It's no wonder the Republic recruited you for this mission. But now's the time to prove yourself. I know you're a scout and not a soldier, but Bastila needs all troops at her side during this attack. Okay, let's go help Bastila. So hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Okay. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and grab our foot locker here. Now, what that was very important to note, whatever your initial skills are, this is what those skills determine what's in this foot locker. If you have skills and stuff, you have stealth foot generator. Uh, scout is a cardio package, adrenaline shot, blast missile, short sword, and clothing, and two med packs. So, this is your status, this is your equip screen. Um, here's your here's your uh, party menu, this determines all your items. Purple means it's new. Uh, I believe blue means it's not. So, we're gonna equip our Equip our uh, clothing, basic clothing, stealth build generator. We're going to equip our short sword. If you try to equip your short sword in your offhand, guess what happens? Goes to your default hand. Three to eight with a plus two damage, but you cannot equip your blaster. You can only equip one type of weapon at a time. And your and your drilling package. Now, these uh, these implants, they will actually improve your base skills. So it's, so it is so having implants does help. So we get plus one constitution with this implant. And with that, we're good to go. Also, by the way, depending on what character you pick, Trask will say something different to you, and your underwear slash your equip clothes will be different. So, if you if you picked a scoundrel, it would be red and white. If you picked a soldier, it would be blue and blue and orange. Trask will comment that if you're a scoundrel, it's like, oh, we got you're the worst of the worst, yada yada yada. We couldn't catch you, we might as well hire you. If you're a soldier, he's like, okay, hey, let's move out. We should stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. Tras has joined your party. And he is a level 3 soldier! Because of the attack, this room is in lockdown. But don't worry, I've got the override codes. You'll have to use me to unlock the door. Okay. So, since we're since we're on the original Xbox, which is what it released for, press the white button, game is paused. Black button, switch characters. Now, if you go through the door, locked. But if you use a, use a, no use a security, it didn't work. locked. So we have to use Trask. This is basically how it trains you to learn how to use Trask. If you talk to Trask during the tutorial, he will mention what buttons you need to press, what buttons you need to use to get through certain uh, certain obstacles, and how to access certain inventory items. Now that the door is open, you better take the lead again. Okay, switching back. So, here we are. This is Cardinal Nassi. The Sith are threatening to overrun our position. We can't hold out long against their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth contacting us on our portable communicators. He's one of the Republic's best pilots. He's seen more combat than the rest of the Endar Spire's crew put together. If he says things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. Okay, let's move out. Once again, the journal is in your pause menu. Go to the top here. Here's your journal, Attack of the Indra Spire. Indra Spire Command, Module. You've received a message from Karp on a high, a highly respected or, uh, a highly respected Republic soldier. He's ordered all hands to the bridge to protect Basila. Here's your log. This is basically your message log for what has been said to you and what you have said. If you ever need to review what's going on, if, if you ever need to review what it is you're doing, you can always check these messages for where you need to go. And you press X, it shows what you have unlocked, what you have not unlocked. Um, here's your skills, you know, get to, get to check your basic uh, abilities, see your skill rank, and your bonus in the skill. Give you a total rank of whatever your base skill rank is and your plus modifier. This will come in handy later. We'll explain more when we get to it. Here's your status screen, uh, constitution. You see your constitution has a green next to it. 
but it's a zero. That's because you are wearing something, i.e. our adrenaline, our adrenaline, our cardio package, that is artificially boosting that stat. That's what that means. Um, and here's, once again, here's our, uh, here's our items, um, party, also, I think hit the black button, here's, here's Trass's, uh, here's Trass's uh, equipment, he has, he has, uh, a blaster pistol, clothing, adrenaline, and a med pack. Um, and he ha has his scripts, he has default script, grenadier, Jedi support, so yeah, you can, you can, um, you can pretty much di dictate the behavior of your characters as well, too, for your allies, so yeah, we're good to go. Anyway, getting right to it. Okay. That door's locked, and I don't have the codes to open. You'll have to use your security skill on it if we want to get past. Okay. Now, if you don't have a security skill, he'll just say, break the door open. But we have security! No problem. <laughs> These Sith must be the advanced boarding party! For the Republic! And here we get our first taste of combat. Now, if we hit the black button here, um, oh wait, Trats is not where we can actually attack him. So what we're going to do, since we're here, we're going to go into here, open up our plaster pistol, and we're going to use a rapid shot on these guys. Uh, you hit A to engage combat, and then you hit X to um, load up your next uh, attacks. What? So, that's pretty much what that is. So we're going to stick the blasters, blaster combat for right now, just to kind of get to it. Dialogues, dead soldiers here. Um, and yeah, these are what the Sith look like in the Old Republic. Not a bad look if you ask me, if you ask me. So, as we get more and more into it, so what we're going to do, if you hit, you hit A to engage if you're in a pause menu. But if you hit X, you can load up your next couple of attacks. We're gonna do rapid attack. Your rep now your rapid attack basically means that your attack hits more often. Well, it's more often. It means you can do more, multiple attacks in one cycle. But I believe it does slightly less damage. I believe it does slightly less damage. But you can hit multiple times. You might hit all six times, you might only hit a couple of times. Trask has what we call a power shot. It fires one shot, but it does a lot of damage. The uh, the only other one is a sniper shot, which is basically the critical ability of the blaster. It basically does critical damage and a chance to stun. If it stuns the opponent, it's done critical damage. So, let's get into it. Press circle, press the white button to continue. It's important to remember that if you are um, if you're Oh, I'm actually, I'm actually running low on health. So let's go ahead and use a med pack next. Uh, but it's, it's, important, it's important to remember that um, important to remember that certain skills come come in handy in certain conditions. So, box, get ten credits and another med pack. So anything else? It's foot locker. You get a short sword, a long sword, and a combat suit and two frag grenades. Now your combat suit gives you gives you more defense. So you get more defense and a max dexterity bonus gives a plus five defense bonus. So we're doing pretty good so far. Now we're going to equip the long sword. The long sword does three to fourteen damage. That's what the short sword does, uh, one to six. But if we equip the offhand, we have a short sword in the office. Now we are dual wielding. Now we're going to go into melee combat. Their combat so before we do anything, I want to switch the trash gear, set this up. Kind of caught on here, but that's fine. So we're gonna hit here, then we're gonna pause. So now we got three Sith soldiers here, and we just got a frag grenade. I'm gonna throw this frag grenade here, power shot this guy, power shot this guy, and power shot this guy. Yes. 
Now we're going to switch to switch to my character, and then we're going to critical strike this one guy, and then do flurry on that guy, or not because the frag grenade did all the damage. Here's a new here's a new fighter come to challenge us. Um, previous actions still stay in place because of course they do. Um, Trask. Okay, we're gonna do that. Don't wanna throw a frag grenade because you will do damage to your party members if they're in the line of fire. And there we go. Now the important important dimension. Now the important dimension. Uh, every um, anytime you beat somebody, they always have remains. So always check them around. Check them. Check the remains. Got a repair kit. That will be for something later. His remains. 11 credits. 13 credits. And that's about it. This guy up. And credits. So that's your money for the game. Now it's important to remember that every time you go into... Oh! Poor little, poor little, poor little joint. What's up? Got parts. Now it's important to remember... I've got a feeling that won't be our last battle with the Sith. Good thing we have med packs to heal our wounds. It might be a good idea to use one now before our next battle. Okay. If you already use the med packs, we're good to go. Now you can use med packs in and out of uh, in and out of uh, combat just by going to the far side here on your on your attack on your uh, action bar and just use the cancel. Oh boy. But yeah, so it's important to mention, mention that when you use melee combat, the AI will react. The enemy AI will react accordingly. So if you're going up to a blaster wielder with, with swords, he will swap to weapons and engage you in melee combat because swords beat guns. Um, just keep that in mind. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to keep on going and just try to knock this out. There's a lesser combat ability. Let's see this behind door number one. It's a dark Jedi. This fight is too much for us. We better stay back. All we do is get in the way. That was one of the Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, we could have used her help. That's unfortunate. Well, the soldiers, the Republic, the Republic soldiers might be getting knocked out, but the very least, the very least, um, at least the Jedi are still doing what they need to do. So, take him out, and yeah. continue. Oh. Missed that attack, but that's fine. So like, you see, like you see, so you see right there, your um your flurry attacks do three do three hits at a time. Um, you can either hit all three or only hit only hit one or only hit two. So that's why I wanted to get the flurry attack because it is actually a really good attack to no use. Can we get your can we get your lightsaber? Ah, uh, not a vibration cell. That's unfortunate. I guess we need to be trained used to with the lightsaber, but that's gonna be it for today gotten pretty far ahead um that's you know what no we're just keep on going let's keep on going let's keep on going at the bridge oh dear goodness okay okay this might have been a bit too much for me to handle don't mind me guys i'm just passing through Uh, by the way, if you if you do a movement at all, you actually cancel your uh, your your attacks. So there's that. Um, your critical strike actually does two hits. So that's fine. Oh, and by the way, you don't actually have to. Um... Basta was not here on the bridge. They must have retreated to the escape pods. We better head that way too. The Sith want Bastila alive, but once she's off the ship, there's nothing stopping them from blasting the Endar Spire into galactic dust. He's not lying about that. So, uh, another thing, you might as well be leveled up there, but uh, this wasn't from an enemy we killed, it's from one of the enemies that died up there. If an enemy dies while you're near it, it, it counts as you being in combat. So, 
you gain the experience from that enemy. You can also die from the explosions on the bridge, so keep so be be mindful of that. Anything here? No. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and well now I have a choice. Yeah, that's correct. We'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and level up. Uh, I have. I, I was debating on doing a level one run for this, but just for the sake of making it streamlined, we're not going to do that this time. <laughs> so, um, whenever you level up, every now and then you get the ability to enhance your skills or your feats. Your skill, your skills, you, you ah, you either get the, you you get a chance to enhance your attributes, skills, or feats depending on the level up. Level two, we all get the ability to enhance our skills and our feats. So let's go ahead and enhance our skills. Get four skill points. We usually would have gotten two. So, still got a cross class skill. We can only put two points into this. Um, but because persuade and security are up as high as they can be for this, we can't put any more any more abilities into this. We're gonna do we're gonna put two into here and two into here. Trust me, this will come in handy later. And our feet. Now, we could we could get heavy armor. But we don't need to worry about that right now. We can't get any more level two. We can't get any level two pieces until we're level four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some pers some proficiency bonus. We can add plus one to melee to attack to, to a plus one attack bonus to melee weapons. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, just to make it a little bit easier for us going forward. Accept and accept. Now then, let's go ahead and keep it pushing. Every time you level up, you all you automatically get your health back, so you, uh, no need to worry about using the med pack. And I think with that, there's something behind here. Damn, another dark Jedi! I'll try to hold him off. You get to the escape pods. Go. Trask, 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 Trask is watching time to tell you to escape. You should make your way to the star procession of the ship. Well, I guess that's, I guess that, uh, I guess that, uh, that, that seals Trask's fate. And with that, we're going to call it a part here today. I've been an awesome, an awesome, and I'll catch you later.